the board where all the Kanbans all the work items are available and are visible has several stages defined for the process. The goal for a flow system is to make those work items flow from left to right. There are some conditions that should be addressed. First, visual signals should limit the work in progress. It should be clear where are the commitment and delivery points. There is also the possibility to include discovery Kanban and upstream Kanban. Then comes lead time. And metrics include not only the lead time, the time between the commitment and the delivery, but also to attain for the differences between a customer lead time versus the system lead time. Also to consider is the work in progress, also known as WIP, and the delivery rate that is intimately related to the lead time. The figure here presented comes from the book of David J. Anderson and allow us to have a visual understanding of the flow system underneath the Kanban board. We can see the visuals that reveal Kanbans, the cards with the work items described, and the limits for the work in progress that are attributed to the specific stages of development. Thus, the board presents a pool of ideas and an initial development work of proposals that implies detailing each work item. Upon selection, the team involved in the development assumes a commitment to prosecute with the work. Upon the prosecution of the three stages a work-in-progress amount of work is considered and includes the work item of the three stages. Upon completion of the work and corresponding acceptance, we can consider the work delivered and complete because it was actually delivered to the customer. By entering this last development stage, it is possible to compute both the lead time and the delivery rate to finalize the items per time period. If we consider Little's Law, it is possible to compute the average delivery rate within a project team by establishing the ratio between the average work in progress and the average lead time. This is actually the base formula to establish the average throughput for a specific stage or set of stages. So, thus recurring to the average amount of work items in a specific stage or stages and calculating the ratio of the average time that these work items stay in that stage or stages, we can actually compute the throughput for specific parts of the Kanban system. This leads us to the conclusion that to optimize lead time, one must ensure that the work in progress is limited and this actually controls one of the variables in the equation. Figure 5 presents an example of a cumulative flow diagram where you can see the metrics that I just described, but visually. The chart has two axes and on the X axis we have the time and on the Y axis we have the number of Kanban cards or work items. Then Two stacked areas represent the work that a team has committed to in orange and the amount of work delivered in blue. This chart is mainly true for all the projects that exist. So let's see, as time goes by, the team commits to a certain amount of work and then delivers functional software to the customer. So as expected, the blue area that refers to the work items delivered grows with time. On the other hand, the orange area depicts the continuous and sustainable work of the team. So, continuously monitoring the approximate values for the average work in progress and the average lead time, this leads us to the ratio of the average delivery rate. So, this leads also to a possible and desired outcome that represents a continuous growth of the orange area 
and a continuous throughput throughout the project's lifetime.